What level of play do you expect from your team for tomorrow's match against Espanyol, who have won their last two games? I want to see a Real Madrid team that continues to improve, evolve, and is in a good dynamic of play. We have won the last two games and we want to continue like that. You said that after the Champions League match, rotations would begin despite the team's injuries. Is tomorrow a good day to start with that? Tomorrow could maybe be a good day for that, but today is not a good day to say that I'm going to start with rotations or not. There's a lot of talk lately about a player's strike. What's your opinion on that? Do you think that the possibility of a salary reduction if players play less could be a solution? Well, I want to repeat what I said the other day. The football industry needs to think a little. Because the goal is to play fewer games to avoid more injuries. If this leads to lowering salaries, well, that's fine. The goal is to play fewer games. And I think the players won't have any problem with lowering their salaries if they play less. The narrative of Real Madrid wins but doesn't play well is back. The other day, you talked about playing vertically without building up play. What does playing beautifully mean to you? That's a great question, but it's different for everyone. For me, playing beautifully depends a lot on the characteristics of the players I have. As I've always said, playing beautifully uh, is defending well, attacking well, and handling the ball well, as well as playing well on, on the counterattack. Beautiful football really has many, many facets, not just one. And this, this is what I think about football, but everyone has their own opinion of what it means to play beautifully. Personally, I really like to see my team defend well. I like to see my team come out from the back well controlling the ball. I also like it when my team doesn't waste time in possession, that it's more vertical in the game. And we can do that if we have fast forwards up front. But if we have different forwards who are more positional, then we would have to play a different football that is not vertical. For example, a football from the wings to put in more crosses. So there are many things involved in being able to say what beautiful football is. Are you considering playing with four natural midfielders on a regular basis? Perhaps as a solution to find that balance you've often referred to. That's also difficult to explain because balance really depends on a collective effort that you can achieve with two attackers, but also with three. I remember that we won the Champions League title in Paris playing with three attackers and we had perfect balance. So, simply adding another midfielder doesn't mean we would have more balance. To have more balance, it's about having a collective effort from the whole group, that's all. Uh, you can achieve this with three attackers or even four. And I know the debate is, what is Bellingham? A uh, Moff, a midfielder, or a forward. We don't know what Bellingham is. In conclusion, I think balance can be achieved with a collective effort from a compact team that fights and sacrifices. And it's something we're going to achieve gradually without a doubt, as we've always done in recent years. Does the mantra that many say, Real Madrid wins but doesn't deserve it, bother you? Does it annoy you when you hear that? Well, not really. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I see our fans happy with what we're achieving. I know we can play better at certain times, but I think Real Madrid fans are used to seeing a rock and roll style of football and not seeing football with many touches. So we try to make our fans 
happy with the qualities and characteristics that we have. Our fans like to win more than play well. Although I know ideally we would win and play well. But everyone has their opinion, as I said recently. Uh, against Stuttgart, we made some fantastic plays. Do you have any news about the Club World Cup and the Intercontinental Cup? No, not yet. The date or other details are not clear. But we have to play what they tell us to play. We're not thinking about this matter because the Champions League has just started. And we have to play La Liga. So until December, we have other things to think about. Is this match an opportunity to close the gap on the leader? This match is simply an opportunity to play and try to win it. And then think about the match next Tuesday. We hope not to have any injuries and we trust to keep improving. The team is starting to improve the dynamics, so this is the opportunity. The season is still very long, and it's not the time to think about the rivals for the moment. The team is still not at its best level this season, and you said that's a good thing. On a scale of 1 to 100, where is the team right now? I don't know, but I do know that we're not at our best level. But it's very normal at this point in the season. I think we've never been at our peak in September in recent years, but it's in October or November when the season starts to enter a new phase. So I think for the moment, we're very good. We haven't been able to see Camavinga play with the team yet. How anxious are you to have him in the team and make his debut this season? Camavinga is very close to being available for the team. I think he'll start training normally next week. Now he has recovered from his injury and has trained well individually. Obviously, he's a very important player for us. And his presence will allow us to make more rotations in midfield at this point in the season. And of course, he's going to help the squad a lot without a doubt. What does it take to generate a rock and roll style of football? It has to be entertaining, vertical, with intensity and good rhythm. A game without wasting too much time to get to the opponent's goal. And I think these are the characteristics that these players have. It's about playing vertically. Our players have a lot of, a lot of strength and a lot of, of energy when they have the ball, especially. And we definitely have to take advantage of this. We've seen in many games that the three forwards, Rodrigo, Mbappe and Vinicius, stay up top and don't come back to help the team in defence. Would you like to see them help the midfielders when the team doesn't have the ball? Or perhaps do you give them the freedom not to do so, to have more strength in attack? No, the team's objective is to be compact. So if Vinny, Killian and Rodrigo try to press the opponent and the midfielders in the defensive line don't come up to help, then the problem isn't the forwards. But it's the same in the opposite sense if the defense is too deep. I'm not saying that they have to come back to defend, but if we want to have a more compact team, they have to get a little closer to be near the midfielders, and that's all. Now, I understand that, according to you, the lack of balance is because the forwards, Vini, Mbappe, and Rodrigo don't come back to defend, but you're wrong, definitely not. 
I don't ask the forwards to do the job that the midfielders or defenders have to do. I think you're one of the people who complain the most about the schedule and the number of games during the season. But the opinion of coaches and players doesn't matter because UEFA is planning to make a European Super Cup with four matches instead of one and the Nations League has introduced one more match in the quarterfinals before the final four. Don't you think this would be the time to do something to stop this, or is it better to do nothing? I think this season nothing's going to change. The complaints we coaches and players have won't change anything this season. But I think it's important to reflect on all this and for important organizations like FIFA and UEFA and the leagues to know that the players are getting tired. And when I say reflect, I mean they have to think about this at least. This season the calendar won't change at all, but the players want to change the future of football and that's something that's right. We've noticed since the beginning of the season that every opponent's attack creates problems for you almost without exception, and your team is outnumbered many times. Do you and your coaching staff think about returning to tactics that were used last season to find balance? Don't you think that if you play with only two strikers, they would have more freedom in the team's attack? You see, obviously, this is something we're analyzing now. Honestly, it's true that the opponents have created many opportunities. Stuttgart's chances, for example, came because we made mistakes with passes playing from the back. Something similar that happened to Barcelona yesterday. When they made a, made a mistake when they came out, and the consequence was a red card. But let me give you another example. In the match against uh, Real Sociedad, again, they created two chances because we made a mistake when we came out with the ball. So, with the team unbalanced, there have been very few chances they have created. The opponent has had opportunities because we have made mistakes when we have the ball and not because of the positioning on the field. Or when we attack, we are not defensively balanced or maybe we aren't well positioned on the field. It's not like that. We've simply made mistakes when we have the ball. So I think to avoid this, it's not that we have to defend better. But in difficult situations, we have to clear the ball as quickly as possible. Sometimes the solution to avoid complications is just to launch a long ball forward. You said the other day that Endrick is a special player and that he surprises you with his performance on the field, despite the few minutes. Do you think he will be able to start in any of the upcoming matches, or is that something you have planned to do? Yes, he is going to be a starter in one of the upcoming matches. Um, and in the future, he will be a starter in many Real Madrid matches. Uh, this is very obvious due to the quality he has. He is a very humble young man who works hard, talks very little, and works a lot. That is something I really like. Uh, ciao.